Hi folks, we got another YouTube video here on a project I'm working on. And this is my Dell PowerEdge R710 that I got off eBay for $95. And my objective was to make it into a workstation, gaming, and server, all for as little as possible. So first thing that I did was added a graphics card. Now this was extremely difficult in this and I haven't found a lot of tutorials on YouTube on YouTube or anywhere else on how to do this. I was one of the first people that is uploading, which is the reason I'm doing this. I don't usually upload YouTube videos. But um, I acquired a riser. It's a number two riser. Let's see if I can pull this out and show y'all. RAM cover here. This is the AMD S9000 server grade workstation card. It has 6 gigabytes of VRAM. It was uh, released in 2012, if I remember correctly. I got it for about $60 on eBay um, about a year and a half ago during the mining craze, so I was pretty happy with that. It's worked really well for light gaming and um, a little bit of editing, but if you use it to its potential, it'll overheat. And I've been trying to figure out what to do with the fans to increase the speed of the fans, but it hasn't had any success at all. The fans are only due to either ambient temperature or the CPU temperature, and there's no way to control that. It's all baked into the motherboard. I've tried everything I can think of. Um, the only thing people are doing with the fans that I've been able to find is trying to slow them down so that they're quieter and um, that has not been my problem at all. The CPUs stay nice and cool even under load and the fans barely ramp up at all um, under an hour long stress test Ida 64 but the graphics cards definitely overheating so I'm gonna have to put either some more cooling on it or switch it out with another card that has active cooling instead of just passive cooling so I'll uh, make an updated video on that when I do it. Workstation card. And um, the way I'm powering this is through a Molex adapter running from a completely external power supply that I picked up used. And that has been what I've been running on. See, I've got my pins jumped. And it's been working for about eight months using this as a daily driver, but uh, I'm ready to take it up a notch, so to speak, and I'm solder in some connections to the back of the power supply so that it's all self-contained. Um, I've got the 870 watt power supplies in this thing, so I'm sure it can handle it. This, this model also came with the 500 watts, and that's what this had before I upgraded it. And um, I'm also upgrading the RAID controller card to a perk 700 so that's going to be in another upcoming video once I get all the cabling for it I just uh, received the card itself off of eBay but so that's the project today it's going to be to wire this up directly to the existing connectors on the motherboard so I'm gonna pull all this apart and um, I'll be right back all right, guys. The first thing that I'm going to do is test the volt, the polarity, and the voltage coming out of this, because I know this works when I have it set up, and I'm planning on robbing the wires off of this power supply and soldering them straight to my new power supply. So I'm going to want to check, figure out which ones of these are positive and which one are neutral on the 12 volt leads. How I'm going to do that is my free digital multimeter from Harbor Freight with any purchase. I've got a bunch of these in boxes because why would you not take a free multimeter? I'm going to assume that red is hot and black is neutral. That gives me 5 volts. I'm getting 12 volts across these leads. So yellow, yellow to black is 12 volts, and red.
red to black is 5 volts. Okay, so on this cable I just see that there is only the yellow lead, the yellow and the black. Let me see if you can focus on this. There's missing a pin and there are no red wires. So yellow on the wiring harness is 12 volts. Black is neutral. And that's how we're getting our full eight pins off of these two Molex. Well, I'm glad I checked. So it's gonna be time to cut these off the harness, solder them to our motherboard. Hopefully we don't make any big mistakes. All right, well, I've got my handy wire snips here and I've decided that I am going to remove the red pins from this harness um, so that I can't make a mistake in the future and think that I have five volts coming to this when I don't. I don't anticipate needing the five volt on this harness in the future, but if I do, I want to know that I need to solder that onto the motherboard. Um, I have already removed the power supplies, so I cannot check which one of the pins is the 5 volt, and I don't want to mess with the 5 volts. I want to keep this as simple as possible. So we're going to only be using the yellow connector out of all of these. I cut it all the way up because I want to have the option of having a longer cable in the future if necessary, or if I want to add two graphics cards to this I would like the power to not be an issue. So that is my Wiley Coyote super genius plan. All right, now I'm going to prepare the ends of the wires for soldering. So I'm just going to strip them down maybe a quarter inch, maybe a little bit less. All right, well, I've got them stripped and uh, should be ready to rock and roll on this. Plan is gonna be to put both on one power supply. I know it won't have redundant power supplies to my graphics card, but in the future, if I feel like that's necessary, I might do it, but I didn't want to have 12 volts running between the two power supplies, whether one's plugged in or not. I wasn't sure how that would affect the onboard um, diagnostics of the power supplies and since this is not in a crucial environment I don't mind running it on just one power supply. Alright guys so my soldering gun is heated up I'm at uh, 831 degrees Fahrenheit which is probably a little too high for this but uh, if I notice any problems I'll dial it down. I prefer to work quickly with solder instead of taking my time. It seems to work better. Now comes the tricky part. Soldering this bad boy to the board. Let's see if we can reposition this camera. 
All right, now on this server, the first three connectors on the power supply, and maybe I can show you better here. This is the orientation that it goes into the server. The first three connectors are positive 12. The next three are neutral. And so, and it's the same way passing through to the connectors on the motherboard. Now I'm going to be soldering into the first power supply unit. We've got two positives and four neutral wires that we're going to be soldering on here. So we're going to have to do two together for one and the same for the other. And then we'll have one neutral and one 12 volt still out in the wild. I always wish I had extra hands when I did things like this. Alright folks, we have the moment of truth. We have our connector soldered into the board. We have our power supply plugged in. And we will be checking all of the connectors to make sure that we have a good electrical connection. Okay, so let's boot it up. It's going to be a little loud, but you know, that's life. Okay, well we've got partial success. Looks like one of the soldering connections is loose. So we're gonna have to start over with that. All right, YouTube, I realized while I was editing this video that I had not shown any of the server working at all. So. This is, I'm actually editing the video now on the server workstation. So this is where I'm all set up and I've placed the server in the closet to keep the noise down. As you can tell, I no longer have external power supplies coming out of the back of the server, which is really nice. Still having overheating issues with the graphics card. I'm running DisplayPort to a HDMI converter to get 4K, 60 frames a second to this television that I'm using as a monitor because it was cheaper than a 1080p monitor. I don't understand deals sometimes, but when they show up, you uh, trip the trigger on them. But yeah, this, so this is the uh, Dell R710. And um, I've added a few other things since the video, and uh, this is going to be in an, a separate build video. But I have a USB-C and USB 3.1 expansion card added. Um, I also added an NVMe drive for a scratch disk and an internal um, SATA drive that doesn't run through the RAID card and it is going to be running my boot drive which is a terabyte Samsung 850 Evo 
SSD, and that's been working really well. So uh, I'll try to get some performance information maybe to uh, do a little screen capture and uh, yeah, finish up this video. But it's working great. Uh, I've been using it every day for about a week and I uh, haven't had any problems, so I'll try to keep you all updated.